and I was uh, having a conversation with the true source. And a lot of the questions you've been asking about the future and what is occurring. And I did discuss this with some others, but I did think and I believe it's really important for us to look at this. We can pass lots and lots and lots of laws to change things on this planet. So you have a law against speeding. You have certain speed limits. What do people do? They exceed the speed limit. Uh, there's a law against going against the red light. You go through red lights. There's a law of, you know, not getting in fights or harming people. For assault and battery. You've overrate the law again. There's a law of, you know, oh, hate and hate mail. And people violate hate and hate mail. There are so many laws that we have. And it's always violated a certain percentage, when it's 5%, 10%, 100%, whatever the law is. So what good are laws? Well, laws set up some kind of a moral code. Uh, it's voted on by what the majority says. And that's the key thing. You know, whatever the majority says. So the majority is reactionary, meaning they go by emotions at that time. And they may find out later they shot themselves in the foot. In other words, it was the wrong thing to do. But at the time, they were emotionally tied up into it. So the question is, all of us who are on this call today and others, we are the solution. The solution means to change the mass consciousness. All the laws in the world are not going to prevent certain things from happening. What will happen is, if we as a collective, on the small group, change the thinking of others, to realize that this thinking, this consciousness of bringing about self-worth, self-love, self-esteem, unconditional love and allowing this, you know, the old cliche, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, if you bother to think about that, I wouldn't want to do anything to harm anybody, so they would harm me. Of course, that's part of the law of karma. It's all wrapped up into it. And you heard me talk about, well, it took just a handful of men and women in the 1700s to break away from the yoke of England. And we were known as patriots, and they were the Tories that were in favor of not breaking away. And through this, unfortunately, we had to have a war. But through this consciousness of thinking, we became a great country. And now the consciousness of thinking is beginning to dismantle it. Well, I do not wish to make a political opinion. What I wish to make and desire to make is we have to realize that each one of you, it is your job, it is your mission and goal amongst others to change the consciousness the mass consciousness into positivity, into love. So the old cliche, not by your words, but by your actions shall you be known. And that begs the question, where do you draw the line? Do you allow yourself to be an enabler? Do you lay down and let everybody walk all over you? Or do you stop and think, how can I express right action and correct exchange to those souls we gotten off the beaten path. And it's going to be very obvious to you they're off the beaten path. How? The way they treat people, the way they talk to people, the way they behave, and their expressions and their energies is very, very obvious. As we know, the world cannot go on like it is right now. There are pockets of love, including you're one of those pockets. There are pockets of those that want to make positive changes, small pockets. You're one of those pockets. And you are the solution. Small pockets of solution. You are the solution. Now, I know I'm being repetitious, but at the same time, what I'm doing is translating the true source of unconditional love and energies for you to awaken from your slumber of just backing off, being quiet, are getting stuck in the minutiae of life and your fears and doubts. 
If you understand that everything is an experience to empower you, that is so great. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, Henry Ford, whether you think you can do a thing, whether you think you can't do a thing, you're right. That's how much in control of your life you are. Many people, many souls, remain stuck in their fears and doubts, and they're self-perpetuated by others who are influenced by negativity, either long-term, short-term, or whatever the term may be. We need to take a look at our lives and saying, where are we? What direction are we going to? And what is affecting us positively and negatively? On my trip in the cruise, which was really wonderful, I talked to a man and his wife had died and he finally, finally found another woman. And he told me all the different jobs he had. And each one, he relates back, was exciting and joyous and happiness. He took the leap of faith. And that turned out well profitably. Then he did something else, and then something else, and something else. Therefore, what is our purpose on earth? Our purpose on earth is to experience everything that we so desire. And that be, can be as simply as taking a cruise, watching the sunrise, smelling the sweet air, watching the leaves change, growing plants, interacting with one another, having intimacy, having love, having a hug, having joy. All that we are here to experience or re-experience if you've been here before. Once we become judgmental, we need to examine what are we judgmental about? What are we judgmental about? Now, there is a right and a wrong. So if a person steals a car, are you expressing a judgment, it's wrong to steal? Are you expressing a fact? In that case, you're expressing a fact. But at the same time, you need to understand that in expressing the fact, you're bringing it to attention. You're also saying it's wrong to steal a car, whether you say it directly or indirectly, and you're in reinforcing your moral code. We are all born with a right and wrong or moral code, every one of us, even those that are banditos, as we say, or whatever negativity in life they choose. They already know it's wrong, but they let themselves be influenced by it for whatever reason. Sometimes it's karmic, sometimes it's negative influence. But whatever it is, we have the luxury to choose our path and direction. And you are, by your words, by your actions, shall you be known. You are leaders. You are leaders with your family, your friends, your relatives, everyone around you. Because even though you may be a huge minority in your actions and whatever you do, it influences others sooner or later. They're going to observe you. That's what's really important. So in this coming week, in this coming time, I would like each one of you to think about this, that you are the solution, that you are part of changing the mass consciousness into a very positive, loving consciousness. You know, I was uh, working with someone on a workshop. Actually, they were putting it on. And she was talking about woo-woo, W-O-W-O, you know, spirituality, woo-woo-woo. And she said, why not think of woo-woo, W-O-O-O, this, win others over. And I like that. So I want to leave each one of you with this thought, that everything you do in your life, you have an effect, and that you can affect everything that goes around you positively, even at a microcosm. And eventually that microcosm becomes a macrocosm. Your moods, your behavior, how you relate to each other, how you think about one another, how you are loving, that's what's going to change the mass consciousness. You are the leader. You are the harbinger of things to come. 